What's up everyone? Um, I am here at Volker Technologies in Irvine, California and um, my student Sky Lu works over here. He is, he is in my UT class currently and he came up with this idea of designing an immersion UT tank with a CNC coolant tank. So I'm here to check it out and let's see if we can uh, play with some immersion UT today. This is the setup that uh, we designed for immersion testing. This CNC machine is supplied by Volker Technology. We make calibration blocks, phase array blocks, and distance amplitude as well as area amplitude blocks. Yeah. So this actually used to be the coolant tank for this CNC machine and we converted it into an immersion tank to hold parts in water. We designed a jig to hold the transducer which is hooked up to a Olympus OmniScan provided by AATA and uh, we're going to do some immersion testing. The X -ax the Z axis is controlled by this Xbox controller so if we dip this transducer into the water we should we should see it um, should see it show up yeah. on the A scan. Okay. Now take it out of the water. Boom. We lowered it into the water. There's the There's your signals. Yep. All right. Perfect. So this is the part that we're going to use for immersion testing and it has a flat bottom hole drilled from the back surface okay so it's going to have top surface a defect signal and then the back surface reflection this is um, this is typically um, a distance amplitude block okay so let's uh, use that and see what an immersion testing what are some of the key things you want to know in immersion testing okay here we go Okay, so what you see here is this is the transducer right here at the top. Then you have the front surface of the block. Then there's a defect down inside there. And then there's the back surface. Okay, these are just the supporting plates. So we have initial pulse all the way here. We have front surface reflection. We'll have the defect reflection and we'll have the back surface reflection. So let's look at the uh, screen of the instrument. So over here, what you look at is what you're looking at is this is the initial pulse this is your first front surface reflection this is your defect signal that's your back wall and that is your second front surface reflection okay now the distance between the initial pulse which is right at the transducer and the first front surface reflection is your water distance the water path. So let's see what happens when you move the transducer closer to the test object and let's see what happens to the water path over here. Okay, here we go. Just lower the transducer a little bit. All right, that's it. Stop. So you see the water path shrinked. Even this is a water path, the distance between the first front surface and the second front surface. Okay, second, ref this is just the second multiple of the front surface. So that shrinks in two but the distance between the first front surface and the back surface stays consistent because that's the thickness of the block okay so this is the top of the block this is the bottom of the block and that thickness stays consistent so if you if you want to just move a little bit up again and watch this distance stay consistent right so the thickness stays consistent but the distance between the two front surfaces or the water path changes now lower it further down Okay, right there, stop. What happens is the second front surface reflection is trying to overlap your back surface reflection. If you keep moving the transducer even closer to the top surface, so keep lowering it, right, stop. At this point, it's almost it's overlapping your back surface. If you keep bringing it closer to the top surface, right there, it's actually masking your defect, right? So you don't want this to happen because now you have to uh, the second front surface reflection inside your part because your piece is too close to the, uh, to the transducer. Move it even closer. Right? So now you see, you can, you can actually see the second front surface before the first defect and the first back wall. Now this would make you think like there is a big defect before the small defect and the, before the back wall. So in this case, if this was your water distance, you would think there are two defects before your first back wall. 
which is not good. So if you bring the transducer even further closer, the multiple front surface reflections start coming in before the first back surface reflection. Okay, And so the minimum water path has to be such that, keep going up, right there. So that should be a minimum water path where the second front surface goes outside the part. This is your part. Okay. Now, once you set the water path, you can optimize the screen range using the range settings and the wedge delay to, uh, to, to just zoom in into the part. So the way you would do that is you can use the wedge delay to delay the whole screen and eliminate the water path because you're not going to find any defects in the water, right? This is the initial pulse and this is the front surface. So you're going to move the front surface all the way to the left. Right, and then using the range, you can zoom in so that now your screen can see the top surface, the back surface, and the defect. And if there are any more defects, it's going to show up in between, and there is no second front surface interrupting your inspections.